On Twitter, I've seen this beautiful video from the lead developer behind React Refiber. It highlights beautifully new options on the Mesh Portal material from Dry Library. It gave me tons of ideas, like building the next Portal game, recreating the closet from Narnia, but also the one I chose for today. Let's see how much portal material works and how to build it. Let's start by getting the starter pack of React Refiber from my GitHub repository. Click on code, copy the HTTPS address. In a terminal, run git clone of the address and the path to where you want to put it, uh, 3F Pokemon portal material. Once it's done, I open it, then I run yarn and yarn dev. Let's click on the link. We have a cube we can rotate around. It's in the starter pack. To generate a background environment for all our monsters, we will use a software named Blockade Labs. Go to blockadelabs.com, hit conjure your world, and from here you have different options to create your world. Either you start from this one, you remix it with different parameters, so you can select the style and type the prompt a prompt about what you want it to be. Let's say water word. And we select um, anime art style, remix this. Once it's generated, you can preview it and download the file. In fact, it's only one big texture image that we will wrap around the sphere. Another way to use it is to hit create new and to draw stuff like what you want it to appear and same, write a prompt and the style and generate it. But I didn't use it. The three that we generated, we go to public, we add a new folder to make it clean, name it textures, and drop your three files here. The thing that is good is that uh, the name of the file describes the prompt and the art style, so you can refine what you did, but it won't generate exactly the same at each time. Let's try to load the texture into a sphere. Let's go to components experience. We will change the default mesh with a sphere geometry. The args, okay. And a mesh standard material, but we will use our texture here. So let's load the texture. To load the texture, we will load it into a map variable, use texture, the name will be uh, textures and the path to one of our texture. Let's take the water base first. Okay, and paste it here. Now we have the map. We can assign it to our mesh standard material. And let's have a look at what we have so far. Oh, it's full black. We need to add some light. Let's add an ambient light with an intensity of 0.5 and add a global lighting uh, preset sunset with the environment from dry. So now we have a sphere with the texture wrapped, but it's outside. We want to go inside to have the good effect. To do this, we simply need to make it bigger. The first arg is at the radius of the sphere. You can see it here. And the standard material, we need to define the side and it's a three dot back side because we want the inner side. We need to import a three, uh, start as a three from three. And now what we have is we are in a sphere. It looks like a real environment, but now you understand that we are inside the sphere. If we zoom out, you can see what we have. It's a bit weird, but it's, it's nice, and once we're inside, it's good. When we reload, we face at the center. So let's adjust the camera position. Go to app, we'll center it, and no height, and 10 on the Z axis. We can also remove the background color. Now, when we reload, the position is quite nice. We can rotate. 
if we zoom out, we can see the sphere is not very smooth. So maybe we can increase the other parameters. Go to the sphere geometry and double the number of segments. Here you can see on the borders, on the edges, it's better. For the monsters, I found this amazing artist providing free assets. There is Ultimate Monsters. The license is CC0, which means you can use it for free. And when you hit download, it opens a Google Drive. To know what monster to select, open the preview. On the top, you have the flying one. The big ones are uh, the one with legs and the blob ones are the small here. I will take a big one. We choose GLTF file and we will take the fish model. When you downloaded it, go to public, create a new folder named model and drag and drop it here. As for the textures, I also added the two other models we will use later. Let's generate the React component for our model with GLTF JSX, then the path to our model, public models and fish. I discovered two parameters to make our life simple. Dash O, the output path, we will use source, um, components and fish.jsx and dash r to say the root folder where our assets are, which is public. Now, if we look at the generated component, it's correctly in components here, and the path is correct, it's models slash fish. Usually what I did was renaming the file and changing the path, but we no longer need to, to do it. But the um, component name is model, Still, we need to rename it to what we want and we want to make it fish. Okay, go to experience. And next to the sphere, let's add our fish component. Here it is. We need to adjust the scale and position, but I love his look. It's incredible. For the scale, we can set 0.6 and the position Y to minus one. Perfect. By the way, when I decide the values, I just do it before recording, so I'm not a genius. I usually try different values until I find the good ones. Okay, just before jumping to the portal material, let's go to our fish and let's play one of the animation provided by the model because it comes animated. Let's log the different actions we have. Okay, if we open the console, here it is, and we have the different name of animations. For the moment, I guess we will take idle. So here in our fish, we will use a use effect. And we will play actions of idle. But as usual, we do a reset. We do a fade in. And we play the animation. And we return the actions of idle and fade out if it's when we will change it but for the moment just keep it like this now our fish is animated it adds a life to the project now time to go to our favorite place the dry library from here we can find the mesh portal material here it's in portals mesh portal material they provide some examples to know how to work with and the documentation here so here are the types, so you know what values to put for the parameters and an example of code. Mesh portal material and inside the portal you can put the code of your words. So let's go back to experience. Here we will create a new mesh. We will add a plane to display our portal inside our plane. So plane geometry. We'll make a simple one of two of width and three of height. And the, the material will be a mesh portal material. And inside it, what we will put is our fish and the world, the sphere. So we put them here. But when we preview it, we have a plane completely black. This is because there is no light in this nested world. What we can do is take the light 
the environment and add the same, maybe even increase the intensity of the ambient light. Now, if we reload, we have that beautiful plane with the world inside. If we go behind, we can see it, but now it's nested in a world, in our portal. Let's do some adjustment. We want a rounded corner, so what we can do is use a rounded slim box and also put the material also on backside so we can go behind. Let's go here, replace our plane geometry and our mesh with a rounded box. We will set two, three and a depth of 0 0.1. And here, rounded box, we close it. And to make it work on the back side, we need to add side three dot double side. So it's front and back. Now we have rounded corners. We go on the side, we can see a little bit of depth and we can go behind, it looks very good. Now let's refactor it to add other monsters and add some text. Then we will add the word opening. Okay, so in our experience, let's create another component. Let's name it monster stage. It will take some props and it will return a component. We want a group and it will take the rest of the props we have. On this component, we will take our rounded box and put it inside this group. But here, the fish, it will be dependent of uh, what we had so far. So we will take it from the children in the props. So here we will set our children. So where we removed it, here, We'll add a monster stage component and we put our fish back inside. But we also need to load our texture for each frame. Here we move it in our component and instead of this texture, because it will be independent for each monster, we will use here texture prop and we will load that texture prop. So on our monster texture, it will be the one that we cut. So far, it still works, it's the same, but we refactored it to be able to load other monsters. Let's start creating the other stage without the, the correct model, because we have the texture. So here, our first one, okay. Then the second one, let's look at the texture. It's in um, public. We have lava word rename, copy, and paste it here, textures, and the second one, it's cactus, rename, and paste, paste it here. We will need to position the stage correctly, so position x is minus 2.5, we add a small rotation on the y-axis, math.py over 8, nice, and for the cactus it's 2.5 and minus math.py. So far this is what we have, we see the three different words but the fish moved to the last one because we can't reuse the, the mesh, but let's load the other models. Open the terminal, let's run the same function but instead of fish, we'll have dragon underscore evolved and the model is dragon. Then we do the same. So the component will be Cactoro. I kept the original model name and the model is also Cactoro. Now, OK, we can go to our to new file. We have Cactoro. Here we will rename it Cactoro, but the rest should be good. And Dragon Evolved, we'll rename it Dragon Evolved. OK, now we can go to our experience. Lava Word is for uh, Dragon Evolved. And 
cactus forests is for Cactor. Here we are, we have the two models, but let's add animation and also rescale them because they are not the exact same size for every model. Let's set 0.5 for the dragon and for the cactus, we will set it even smaller, 0.45. For Cactoro, we will also add the default animation. So we can go to our fish, copy the code, and run it. It's also idle, and on Dragon Evolved, import use effect. I know the name is not idle here. For the bird, it's flying idle. But if you want the list of all the animation, you have to log the action object. And here we are, we have our models animated, looking nice, correctly scaled. We can see their back, it's nice. For the fonts, I used my best friend Google Fonts. I found one named Caprasimo. I chose this one, you download the family. Same as always, go to public, create a new folder named fonts and drag your font here. Now we have the font, we can go on our experience, go to the monster stage component and add a text. For the text, we can say hi for the moment. The font is the path to our font, so fonts slash caprasimo dash regular dot ttf the font size i put 0 0.3 the position it's 0 minus 1.3 to make it below and 0 0.051 oh I, I will explain to you why let's put 0 50 for the moment and encore y bottom so it's aligned with the bottom of our box okay don't forget to import it from dry so here we can see we have high text but it's a bit blinking i hope on the video we will be able to see it here on cactoro we can see it this is because our uh, rounded box is 0 0.1 of width so it's 0 0.05 on the front and 0 0.05 on the back. So when we put 0 0.05, it's exactly uh, in conflict with the rounded box. So if we just increase it a little bit, now it will be a little bit in the front, but you won't be able to see it, but it won't be in conflict anymore. And the text we want is uh, the name. So we will add a new prop and we will display that. We will also add a mesh basic material for the text color. We'll also make it come from a prop. And we will use tone mapped to false to have the exact color we are expecting. So here, let's get the prop color. Okay, so now we can go on monster stage. We can say name here, it's dragon. The color is equal to this. I used the inspector to find the color. Let me show you how. What I did is I opened the inspector. I just do color or any color value. I click here to have the color picker and I select a place I like. So I will take the same color as its skin and I copy paste the color. So we need to do for Cactoro. Name is Cactoro color is this and we also need to make for the fish because it didn't exist at that time so i named it fish king and the color it is this now we have the nice text with the good color below now let's add the effect when we double click we will open the world on our experience let's add a state named active and set active to know on what world we are We'll set by default null, so we are not in any world. And on our monster stage, we will add active. So it will be active and set active. We will just pass the set active function. For the set active, it will use the name of uh, the monster stage. 
active and active nice now we go to monster stage we need to get the active and set active props what we will do is on the rounded box on double click what it will do is call set active but if active is equal to our name we will set it to null or we will set our name so it will toggle either active or deactivate it now to really open the world there is a prop on mesh portal material named the blend that when it's set to one it will completely open the world or if it's zero it's not open like what we have currently or 0 0.5 it's a bit of both world so we'll set to active equal name it will be one or zero Later, we will animate it to make a smooth animation. So far, what do we have? When we double click, it opens the world. We can rotate. If we double click it back to its original position, same for Cactoro, but the camera position is wrong, but we will animate it later. But still, it opened the world and it closed the world. Let's start by adding some easing when we open a word. Here, instead of setting the blend, we will remove it, but we will keep a reference to our portal material. So let's define it here. Const uh, portal ref, portal material equal use ref. So now we can use a use frame. What we will do to have a smooth animation, we'll use the math package that provides an easing function. To install it, yarn add math, rerun the server, and in our use frame is the word open, so it is active equal to name. If it's the case, we have now the easing function available, we can use dump, portal ref portal material dot current the property we want to animate is blend is the word open if it's the case we want to go to one or to zero then we can say the speed of animation we want let's say 0 0.2 and the delta the delta we get it from the use frame so we don't need the state we can use underscore state and delta because we use it nice now when we double click it smoothly fade from our world to the monster world next thing to do is to animate the camera position to really enter into the world to animate the camera we can go to our orbit controls but it's not easy to animate orbit controls so what we can use instead is the camera controls that provide functions to animate it we will need a reference to it Let's name it controls ref. Save it here. Controls ref equal use ref. And we'll do a use effect over the current animated value. So it's active. The current active word, sorry. If a word is active, it's our first condition. Then we will need a target position. The target position will store it into a new three dot vector three. Then we need the current item we want to target, but they don't have uh, any way to get it from monster stage to uh, our experience component. So a simple way we can do it is by going to our monster stage on the rounded box on this mesh, we will add a name property and we will use the name that we set for the text here. But we know it's unique for its monster stage. Okay, so now in our use effect, to retrieve this object, we can use the scene. So um, const scene equal use three. And we'll use the selector. So on state, we get the scene. So we only have this one. Scene dot get object by name active because we know we have one active 
get world position to have the real world position, not the local position. And it's stored into the target position. Now we have this, we can do controls ref dot current and we will set a look at. The first parameters is the position of our camera. We want it to be at zero, zero and five to go inside the world. So we go from 10 because on our app level we are at 10 to five to go inside the world. Then the three other parameters are the target position. So target position dot x, y, and z. Then it's just if we animate it or not. So we say true. And to be able to animate it back, we will do else, set look at, our target will be zero. And we will go from five, our position to 10, back to 10. Now, if we double click, it smoothly go into the dragon world. And when we double click back, it goes back to the correct place. It's the nice effect we prepared. And if we go to another place and we double click, it rotates back to the initial place we want. But because we are professionals, we want to add some details. First, when we go to a word, we don't want to be able to do this or go below and see weird stuff. It breaks a bit the magic and it explains the user what is really happening. So on camera control, we can add some props. It's the same that on uh, orbit controls. Max polar angle, it's uh, the limit on top and bottom. So min polar angle, math.pi over six. Now, if we go to Fish King, we can't go below, it's blocked. And on top, we can't go too much. We can go just straight forward on top. So now the experience is better. You don't have bad results from anywhere. But currently you need to guess that you have to click on a card because nothing is happening on hover. So let's add some nice effects. Because our monster stage doesn't include the 3D model, but it's our experience that has access to fish, dragon, and cactus. We'll need to put our logic here for the hover state. So what we will do is create another state named hovered and set hovered. We will pass it here. It's exactly the same logic than active and set active. And now inside our monster stage, we will need to get it here also, over and set over. And we will add other pointer events. So we had on double click, we will add on pointer enter. What we do is we set hovered to our current uh, model. On pointer leave, set hovered to null. Now let's go to our different models. So here we have the fish. We can add a state named hovered. So is hovered equal to a fish king? This is not very sexy. We should refactor it, but let's do it this way. Hovered is equal to dragon. And for this one, hovered is equal to cactor. Now we can go on our model. So the fish, here we played idle animation. But what we want to do is here to get, if we are hovered, we get also the rest of the props this way. So the anim, const anim, is are we hovered if it's the case? the name of the animation for fish will be wave or it will be idle. So now instead of playing idle, we will play anim. So it will be either this one or this one. Here it's anim too. And it doesn't work. I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, I know the mistake we did is that our use effect is only triggered once, but we need it to be triggered when the hovered value change. Now, if we hover fish king, it's waving at us. And if we 
go out, it smoothly go back to idle state. Let's do it for Dragon and Cactoro. So here it's on the same logic, hovered, we get the rest of the props in props. Const anim is hovered, if it's the case, it's not wave, it's dense that we want. We will play anim and anim and we need to trigger it when hover change. For dragon evolved it's also the same logic, so hovered and the rest of the props. Here we need the anim, so is it hovered the different anim from dragons? We have headbutt and flying idol, so anim, anim, and if we are hovered. Now if we hover dragon it's giving headbutt, fish king is saying hello and Cactoro is dancing. Let's add a last nice effect is then we hover, we want our cursor to become a pointer so people know we can interact with the 3D scene. And this is a two second thing to do, you just go to experience, use use cursor from dry and you pass the value hovered. So it also has two other uh, parameters, on pointer over and on pointer out, which are the value you want for a pointer. But by default, it will be the good ones. And now if we go to Fish King, our cursor is correctly set to pointer. If we are nowhere, it's not a pointer. And now it's a pointer. Very nice. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's the case, please hit the like button as it really helps the channel be more visible to other developers. To not miss the upcoming video tutorials, don't forget to subscribe and if you can't wait, jump to the next video available here.